Hi, welcome to Inside the Moms Club, where being a mom is the coolest place to be. Here in the Moms Club, we believe that what embarrasses you now will make a great story later. And let's face it, if you don't laugh sometimes, you're going to cry. Join us in having a good laugh together. I'm Monica Samuels. You are now inside the Moms Club, your private destination for all things mom. Hi, moms. Welcome to Inside the Moms Club. I'm Monica Samuels, your host, and I'm here with Julie Orchid. Hello. I'm so excited to be here today. I am so glad that you're here. And you know who else is here today is our friend Beth Bigler. Oh, who yes. Is our, she specializes in pet bereavement counseling and dealing a lot with a lot of issues related to our pets. Yep. And I have something that is weighing on me today that I'm going to ask Beth about. Because I had an experience the other day. My son brought his dog, who was a rescue dog, mm -hmm. and we and we love Max, but we've decided that Max was an escape artist, which is probably how he ended up at the shelter to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we we live on about an acre, and our backyard is huge. And so I I didn't see Max come to the door for a long time. So finally, I walked outside and started yelling his name, and he appears from the creek by our house on the other side of the fence, and I could not figure out how he got over there, yeah, how I'm getting mission. him back, because my worst fear is my son's just gonna kill me if he puts me in charge. Now, he didn't ask me before he put me in charge of his dog, but he brought him, and I love Max, so. But in the way I got him, now this is a helpful hint for America. This is how you get your dog back. If you've trained them properly, <laughs> you yell, hey, you want a treat? And if you've given them enough treats in their life, you know, yeah, the vet doesn't back. the vet doesn't recommend this. But hey, he came back the way he left, and I figured I found the little hole that he had found in the fence, and so I was able to cover it up. But that scared me because I thought this poor dog mm -hmm. has already been to a shelter once. Now he's microchipped now, which is great. But I kind of had PTSD because as a child, when I was a small child, we had a dog, our first puppy, Mr. Chips. One, my, my, yeah, that Mr. was his name. Chips. I didn't name him. Okay. Um, was lost. I mean, my parents always told us that he was stolen from our backyard. Now think about how tra traumatizing that is for a kid to think that there was a theft of, mm -hmm. and it was my puppy. He never came back. We never oh, saw him again. Monica. So I'm curious, like, how do you deal with, we talk a lot mm -hmm. about pet bereavement when you know you're about to lose a pet or you've sat, suddenly lost a pet through illness. But what if your pet just leaves? Yeah. I mean, you you lose, he wanders off, he escapes. How do you deal with that? Big question. Thanks for the question, Monica. And I'm so sorry for your scare because that sounds really terrifying. Mm -hmm. so glad you used your treat technique to uh, to bring <laughs> him home. So yeah, you know, when when one of our animals goes missing or we, we can't locate them, it is very scary. It's blindsiding, it's shocking, it brings up a whole lot of emotions. And it's actually a very specific specific type of grief called ambiguous grief. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. So ambiguous grief, for those of you who don't know, is the type of grief that doesn't have a certain closure, right? So oftentimes that's if somebody goes missing and we don't know what's happened to them. And we even use this term sometimes for people who may be experiencing a medical challenge. Um, often we, we talk about dementia with ambiguous mm. loss, right? Because the person's there, but not really there. So there's kind of two definitions. But you are experiencing ambiguous loss when an animal goes missing. So what do we do? One thing we can do is focus on what we can control, right? Because there's a lot of things about the circumstance that are out of our control, but a couple things we can do that are in our control. For example, we can control how much we look for the animal, where we post, what efforts we make, calling shelters. It can feel very empowering to put up flyers and really make a, a good-hearted effort to look for our beloved. Um, we also can control how we treat ourselves, right? The number one thing I tell anyone that's going through a missing uh, situation is to have self-compassion. You didn't mean for this to happen. Mm. Mistakes happen. Accidents happen. Most of the time when our animals, um, you know, run off, they're chasing 
chasing after something they love or they're, or they're looking for some adventure, right? And so it's not always our fault and we certainly didn't mean for it to happen. So we want to be real careful with bringing in self-compassion and not being unkind to ourselves. We want to nurture ourselves through this. Wow. When do you, get, I don't want to say give up the search, because there's a couple, so in our neighborhood, to this day, there's this lost puppy, this lost dog flyer. It's posted everywhere in the neighborhood. It's a yeah. little chihuahua wearing a, a stocking, <laughs> a Christmas stocking cap. Very cute little dog. And, you know, I we don't even know if he was ever found because they didn't come back and take the signs down. But if you're there, if you're that dog's owner, like at what point do you say, okay, I'm just going to have to end this. And, I, and then with a little caveat, Julie here had a ferret mm -hmm. who was missing for one year. Stinky mm -hmm. Smokey. Stinky Smokey mm -hmm. was found later. And so... A year later. You know, you always, you don't want to ever give it that hope, but when when is it wise for your own Yeah, you when know, do you emotional? allow closure yeah. on this mm -hmm. terrible situation? Well, well, one of the toughest parts about this type of grief and loss when we have a missing animal is that we have so many unanswered questions and we're constantly wrestling with those. Are they okay? How did this happen? Are they scared? Are they suffering? Are they safe? You know, all those kinds of questions. And so, you know, I recommend if you have those questions to, you know, write them down, crumple them up, put them in a box every time you have one, because these are questions you're not going to get the answers to mm -hmm. and they're above your pay grade, right? So we, we really go through a lot of suffering worrying about these unanswerable questions and at a certain point for a lot of people and that point is different for everyone it's okay to say I feel like I need to do a ritual or a closing mm. or a goodbye here to kind of formalize this for myself. I don't have a specific timeline. Everyone feels different about that. One of the things with ambiguous loss that um, Dr. Pauline Boss teaches, and she kind of coined the term, is the idea of both and. So I can both be hopeful that my mm. beloved will come home and I can allow myself to grieve and, you know, do a, a funeral ritual or write a goodbye letter or do, do something to sort of close the circle for myself. Just because you do some sort of ritual or goodbye or kind of making peace with yourself about it doesn't mean you can also have hope that perhaps down the road we have a different outcome. Like Stinky Smokey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. great advice. And Stinky Smokey is an inspiring story except for the fact that that was a ferret. And I think if, <laughs> if I saw Stinky Smokey run through my house, I, I would probably leave myself. But, uh, but no, that's excellent advice and we appreciate it because so many people, now they have microchipping, that's helpful. And so more people are able to find their pets than, yeah. than were before. But thank you so much, Beth, for sharing thank that you, with us. Thank you, Beth. The, that is You're welcome. very insightful. And helpful. Have a great day. You too, it's great seeing you. Well, we are very, very, very excited and very lucky today to have a guest with us yes. who is, we've, we all know her. We almost feel like we know her personally. <laughs> Should we recognize her from that iconic series, Little House on the Prairie, where she played Lori Ingalls Wilder. Yeah. She was the former president of the Screen Actors Guild. And she has gone from playing on the prairie yes. to incorporating her new lifestyle brand called Modern Prairie. Please welcome mm -hmm. Melissa Gilbert. Welcome Woo! to the Post Club, Melissa. So exciting. I mean, seeing you and meeting you, Melissa, feels like a very warm hug. As you know, uh -huh. I'm sure a lot of people see, you know, say that when they get to meet you. So, you know. I do get that a lot. There's, a, there's an instant sense of familiarity Mm -hmm. um, I also sometimes get people will come up to me and say, where did you go to school? And the like, <laughs> standard answer is in your living room. Yeah, that's right. For, yeah, yeah 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Well, you you have had such an amazing career. I mean, from a being a child actress and continue to act and produce and the things you did to then being the president of the Screen Actors Guild, which mm -hmm. is just a completely different sort of activity to be involved in. And then you ran for office. You You were... A candidate and in all of that you you moved from your life in LA and mm. now you live in the Catskills you moved to New York you completely changed your lifestyle and and that's where the you started Modern Prairie how did that all happen can you just take um, us through that that's quite a, a journey kind of across the country in a way 
that's a lot of journey too because there was um, Michigan in between. So yeah, yeah. I was living in Los Angeles where I'm from. I'm born and raised in LA. Actually, I did live, live here in New York in the 80s briefly um, in the late 80s into the early 90s and then I moved back to LA. So I was living in Los Angeles and I was actually really struggling living in Los Angeles as, as a, a woman and an actor and a woman who was aging um uh living in a city where you're not allowed to age in a business mm. where the highest priority is put on you know staying young and staying thin and all the the stuff that goes along with that and i really didn't want to be that person so i was sort of itching to get out of los angeles and i was single i had gone through a divorce um single mom of uh one last child at home a teenager and i met and fell in love with the man who would be and is now my husband tim busfield Oh. And um, when we met, he said, you know, after after a while, he said, you know, I'm really into you. I think you're a remarkable person. But I live in Michigan and I and he was he was about to say, and I don't know how we're going to do this. And I said, no, no, great. This is great. Take me there. Get me out. I want to go, <laughs> I want to, go to there right now. Yeah. Um, one way ticket. We moved to Michigan. We moved to a tiny town in Michigan. And I mean, tiny, tiny, tiny town, um, Howell, Michigan, into a historic landmark Victorian home that had built, been built in the 1800s. Mm, beautiful. And I began this journey of discovering who I really am on the mm. on the inside and allowing the outside to reflect that without any artifice. I um, stopped putting anything in my face, no Botox, no injectables, none of that stuff. I stopped coloring my hair. Mm. I had, I'd had breast implants for years, I had those permanently removed. Um, and I just, I was able to escape Los Angeles and that pressure long enough to become myself. And the natural progression though, because I was still a working actor, um, was to move where the work was. And for us at that time, it was New York City. And oh. we moved to New York City. Uh, I did a ton of plays. Tim directed and acted in a lot of television. And um, but the city's very limiting and not exact. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great to to spend limited amount of times in, but we wanted uh, space and the garden and chickens. And so we started looking for a second home and we found this property in the Catskills, this really dilapidated uh, hunting lodge. And we redid it, a lot of it DIY. And it was ready by Christmas of 2019. So when COVID hit, we locked down up there and that became our primary home. And that's where we live now. Now we've bought the land next door. So now we have 40 acres oh, and wow. we have the chickens, we have the garden, all of which we built ourselves in 2020. And, and at that same time that I was kind of coming back to this um, true me, comfortable in my own skin, I sort of felt that the need to share it because I find that that the greatest comfort I get is from sharing stories with other women, women who have been through wow. what I'm going through or who I can nurture through what they're going through because I've been yes. through it. That community was, is very, very important to me. And I connected with a woman who is now my business partner, the remarkable Nicole Hazy. And um, we came up with an idea for a lifestyle line called Modern Prairie, mm -hmm. which has been now we're, we're about a, a year and a half in. Um, we've done it all ourselves, very scrappy, very, very sort of word of mouth um, and grown this brand. Um, we do have a retail component. All mm -hmm. of our um, all of the things we sell, all of our artisans are women. All of the companies we work with are, com are women owned companies. Nice. Um, and all of our products have a story. They're not just a thing, but they're a thing with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all of that, we have amazing workshops on everything from um, dealing with grief during the holidays to uh, making a perfect pie crust to how to deal with uh, the reality of your finances when you've been removed from it for your entire life and all of a sudden it's your responsibility to how to take a trip <laughs> by yourself, yeah. um, how to deal with aging parents, how to deal with children bouncing back home, um, how to make mozzarella cheese. So we're sort of, and we do a lot of crafting too. We're sort of all over the place, but and now we have an app and I've watched this community grow to such an extent that now the women on our app are getting together with each other nice. without us and supporting one another. We're just now stepping into the menopause, peri, 
perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopausal space, and having that conversation this mm-hmm. month um, because we just had National Menopause Day. And I mean, um, is that every day or is that <laughs> menopause day is every day? Yeah, I, mean, I actually learned. About, I actually learned about October 18th is I learned it from reading your blog. So, yes. What, yeah, what, I had no idea there was just one day. To me, it's just been years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Really, exactly. Yeah, I think that's just the day we all recognize. Yeah, it, you know? we, I don't know how we recognize it. Like, blow a big fan on yourself, or I don't like what's what's the, the ritual? But <laughs> just no, nonstop I mean, sweating. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Really. Yeah. Oh my goodness! It's really attractive. So you, um, I have a quick question for you, Melissa. We, you know, you've got the green thumb, you've got the cooking, you've got the crafting on this. And last night we were having dinner and Monica's like, are you even listening to me? I was like, actually, I'm really busy on Melissa Gilbert's <laughs> app right now. And I, well, it's all about four classes I would love to sign up for. I mean, traveling solo, making something. Do you have a favorite? Are you uh, really best at gardening crafting or do you love the cooking part people are going to want to know all over the place i like everything you know i i i love learning a new craft so i i started with knitting and then i moved to crocheting and then i learned needle felting and i taught myself cross stitch and now i'm learning to quilt oh my gosh wow i had no idea i could even sew yeah but i'm learning I just I shipped my sewing machine to Albuquerque, where I'm going to be living the next six months. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, I and I love cooking. I've written a cookbook. I cook all the time. It's my um, it's my sort of zen. Um, yeah. What not hobby activity? Um, and um, and I garden too. I didn't get to garden this year, unfortunately, because. We thought we were going to be leaving for Albuquerque in February, and then both strikes happened, and it sort of kept getting pushed down the road. So I didn't want to plan anything in case I wasn't going to be there. Right. Um, I did manage to get some tomatoes and basil in because I had to have something. <laughs> and I did plant a, I planted a, a really nice um, pollinator garden because I'm, you know, we have to nurture the pollinators as much as we can. So I was able to do that. So I'm I'm sort of a little bit of of everything, and I'm still you know. A volunteer. I'm still an activist. I'm still mm. a loud mouth. I'm still <laughs> getting myself in trouble with my big loud mouth. Um, involved in local politics and um, union politics still. So I'm kind of everywhere. Wow. I, I'm feeling very inadequate. I know. I was like, uh, yeah, I need to learn something. I, yeah. I, I can't cook, and, uh, <laughs> as we all know. And yeah, but I can do some other things. So that's yeah. good. And I noticed from your app, it's for everybody. I mean, like, those of us who can't cook, there's a there's another part of the app, a community that you can join for other, you know, aspects of. Life yeah, I love the connection know. part. The, like yeah. she said, these women are meeting each other. They're talking to each other, and they're actually giving each other, you know, a boost of confidence thanks uh-huh. to you to go out and do. I mean, some of these things that you and I are not very good at. I love it. So I- one of the things that I have felt strongly about because I wrote a book a few years ago called Comeback Moms, and it was for women that we're gonna take a little time off from work to mm-hmm. take care of their children, raise their kids, but they were planning on coming back into the workplace and they want to stay connected. But the idea too was, hey, our time may not be, you know, we don't, why are we, we don't have to live on a man's schedule where we have to make it when we're in our 30s or 40s, maybe we're gonna make it in the yeah. career world in our 50s and 60s, maybe we'll be a little bit older. Do you, does Modern Prairie address women, you know, like? wanting to suddenly start a business and, you know, be, you know, on the Forbes 50 over 50 list? Or, I mean, who, <laughs> is it connect to everybody? Yes. Or what, what's the, the demographic yeah. here? Absolutely. I mean, our demographic tends to skew towards uh, women who are closer to my age. I'm in my late 50s. I'm actually, I'm going to be 60 next year. Oh. Um, but, I mean, we, we, we tend to skew more to the 50 plus, maybe 45 plus. Um, but there are a lot of women who are starting over, a lot of women who are starting new careers, a lot of women, you know, we've reached, we reached this last third of our lives and, and um, there was a tendency to call it a, a midlife crisis, but I call it a midlife reassessment where we now still have to see a lot of people and women in particular are stopping and saying, am I doing what brings me joy for mm-hmm. the rest of my life? Because you can see that, you know, it's not infinite now. And, um, and so 
a lot of women are reassessing and changing careers or starting careers or 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 finding just new things to do with their lives and i think that's an extraordinary thing because before this generation really i think our generation um there's a real tendency to just marginalize women as they age they're either you're either a really that old crazy lady across the street yeah. or that sweet little lady who needs somebody to walk her across the street because she can't do it herself and there's so much more to us than that and i think this generation too because we 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 were the working women for sure our our mothers you mm -hmm. know burned bras to get us where we are but we took it and went further I don't think this is a generation that's going to allow itself to be marginalized like that. So we are changing and growing, but that can be scary. So that's why we have the Modern Prairie community to lift each other up and help each other do all of these things now. Yeah, I love that. Um, I noticed, so I love your community. So you have community guidelines on the app, and I'm just going to share them because they're, they're excellent. They should be on every Yeah, app. they should be on everybody's. It's keep it positive, no room for judgment, mm -hmm. explore and connect with one another, be respectful and ki kindness breeds kindness and have have fun and stay curious. I love that. And, I, and my question is, so the other part of me, when we wrote the book, we interviewed 100 women across the country yeah. and it, these moms. And we said, so what was the worst boss you ever had as far as your experience with your children? And they all named women, other women who weren't good to them. And I thought, well, that, and then we, at one point we said, are we writing the wrong book? Should yeah. we be encouraging women to be better to each other? I love these community guidelines. Are you finding women are supporting each other? Are you trying to encourage more women to, to support each other? Or what's been your experience in the community with that? I think our default is to support each other. I think that in the larger world, like outside off of our app, where First of all, I'll just say this about our app versus social media. Social media is an open, it's the wild, wild west. Anyone right. can communicate with anyone. You don't have to invite people in. You don't have to ask, you know, they don't have to ask your permission to comment on something you post. And as we know, the further apart we are from one another physically, the meaner people can get. They'll say things to you from their closet in front of their computer that they would never say to your face. Mm -hmm. But on the Modern Prairie app, um, you only connect with people if you want to. It's not automatically open. I mean, everybody can read your comments if you post something, but if you want to communicate with someone specifically, you have to ask them, they have to agree and, and you can stop that communication at any time. So that provides a safer place. I also think there's a real tendency, um, there, you know, the, the, the overall atmosphere outside in the world is what makes us competitive with one another. I think we're forced into that. I don't think that's our default. I think our default is nurturing and lifting each other up. But when you get outside in, in particularly in the business world with with the uh, the men folk, they have a tendency to make us compete with one another. Um, when I think we really feel that pressure when we're dealing with the male dominated, I hate to say it, male dominated, um, well, it is business yeah. world where they make the most money, they have the most control, they have the most input, they have the most power. And so we're all sort of scrambling to get um, to, to climb that ladder. And I think we have a tendency to be very competitive. Whereas if you take the men out of the equation and it's just women, it's a much more supportive environment. Not that men don't have, don't get me wrong. I love them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, clearly, I've been married three times. <laughs> um and I'm mad for my own husband, who is one of the all time great feminists on the planet and has taught me and allowed me to be um, more of a woman than I've ever been in my life. So, well, you ha you are you have children and you are also a grandmother. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I have a question about that. So what what is the one message that you give your grandchildren? I'm really curious about that. Like what did I obviously the coolest grandmother on the planet? You know, she's super modern. Yeah. Like, I mean, what are what is the message that you're spreading to them? Um, you know, um, being close the, to 60. Um. Well, the girls, I constantly am telling them they can do anything they want. I like it. Be anything they want. Yeah. They don't have to ask permission. They should just do it and be proud of themselves. I think my one job right now as your grandparent is to 
never say no. I just say yes. That's my job. My yes, job that's is what to my say mother yes. says. You can say yes. You get to say yes. I get to say yes. I get to give all the bad, noisy toys and the chocolate <laughs> and the candy. Um, and I don't have to deal with bedtimes. And I'm so being a grandparent for me, and I know my husband, Timmy, feels this way too. We're so much more relaxed as grandparents than we were as parents because we've done it. Yeah. We've yeah, done you know. all of it. I mean, we've been through. Stitches, not so serious yeah broken mm. bones and crying and tantrums and doing homework and not doing homework and failures and not getting chosen and all the things that the kids go through so there's nothing the grandkids can bring to us that we just don't go mm, okay yeah you know, i look whatever. forward to being more relaxed that's a i think i'll be a great grandmother because it's totally in my wheelhouse to you know say yes make people happy and yeah. have fun <laughs> you know it's like not have to so yeah no that is that is great yeah I, well, I will tell you, it is exhausting, though, because uh, I, there is a reason we have children when we're young. I just came from the weekend with my stepdaughter and her three and five year old. And every day I went over and I was like a human jungle gym. I was the Granny Mel gym <laughs> all over me. And it was fantastic. I've never slept that hard. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, that is that is amazing That's a, that we have something amazing to share with you. We have a good friend, Delia McClendon, is here from our favorite skincare line, yes, Farmhouse Fresh. Welcome, Delia. Welcome back to the Moms Club. Oh, Delia. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to see everyone. I've got to share with you. So last night uh, we went to visit Dancing with the Stars, and it was it was really fun. And at the end, we were all in the dance floor talking to different people and suddenly someone points to one our producer and said let me see your hands and she's like mm -hmm. oh your hands are beautiful what do you use on it and she's like farmhouse fresh and i yeah. and i said i use it too and she's like oh let me see your hands everybody <laughs> you're all sharing hands and talking about farmhouse fresh so yes you have amazing products for those that don't know they're or they're all organic and they smell beautiful yeah. they they make your skin beautiful and feel young and fresh and they get stolen They're, out of my bathroom yeah, from my we have, children on yeah, a daily basis. It's I, very frustrating. And by your 85-year-old mother, yes. my mother has even tried to, you know, swipe it. <laughs> get yeah. some of my farm, which I'm happy to share with her. Um, so, yeah, no, we love it. And you have a great mission, which is you help save animals, which we think is tremendous. So we are yes. very excited to have you here today and to share with our audience the new promotion and a yes. new product which is the smurf cake moon dip back to youth ageless body mousse we have used your moon dip body mousse before it is tremendous can you tell us a little bit about that and why the word smurf is included in the yeah. name of the product yes thank you thank you for that intro that was perfect um Yes, so at Farmhouse Fresh, as you know, we grow our own microgreens, which are in all of our products. And um, so we, we say that we provide rescue for two. Yes. So we rescue your complexion and we rescue animals in need with um, the sale of our products. So we, as, as you know, you, you all have sampled lots of our products and we have a huge line, all sorts of amazing things for face and body and great gifts. Um, but our most recent, very exciting um, collaboration was with the Smurfs. Ugh, love yes, them. those Smurfs. Yes. So I was just saying to Melissa, I was like, this is like all of my childhood, <laughs> like just coming it's like clashing you know, all together. This whole episode, yeah. you know, I used to watch Little House on the Prairie and Smurfs all at the yeah. same mm -hmm. time. So, mm -hmm. so what this is, this, um, this collab, it's six products, um, limited edition products. This is the, um, the Smurf cake, aid, back to youth, ageless mm. body moves. And a dollar from every single um, sale goes to our Smurfy Ever After Animal Rescue Project. Nice. So that is nine different animal rescues across the United States who are saving animals in urgent need. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, we already um, have, you know, the animal mission in all of our products, but this is a really special, um, a special one. So um, I think one of the things, Monica, we were talking about, about this product, this has been a hit. We are getting five-star reviews on this Smurf cake, um, ageless mousse, because it is so, it's so moisturizing. It's great for that, you know, that crepey skin on the neck, on yeah. the decollete. 
It smells amazing, but it also, in addition to all the farm-grown goodness, this has blue Tuscan kale in it. Oh. It also has retinol mm. and peptides. So all those good age-fighting things. It smells good, too. Yes. Oh, yeah, I love it. it smells Julie amazing. tried to steal it yesterday, I, I, but I was... I'm I guilty. stopped her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, interestingly, so I was on the Modern Prairie app, and I noticed some of the women there were talking about skin care and aging as you get older how you use products to help your skin i mean i guess melissa that's that's another thing that's big right now in modern prairie is women mm. they want to know how to because you said you don't use any un, you don't use botox or anything like that but products like farmhouse fresh which is all natural i guess there's a lot of people in the modern prairie community that would like to know more you know, have more products like this that they could use or learn more ways that they could keep that youthful glow. Absolutely. Um, actually, there was a woman just asked a question on the app the other day about skincare and if we would have that conversation. It's it's um, it, it's a very broad topic and very individualized. And so I haven't even begun to think about how we would approach it. But it is because everybody has their own way and their own. I have particularly sensitive, sensitive, sensitive skin. And any sort of fragrance at all can sometimes cause me to break out in rashes. So I have to be really mindful of things. I have used Farmhouse Fresh products, however, and I'm OK with them. Yay. Um, and I love them. Um, and they smell so, so yummy. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I think it's 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 a it's a, a very a, intense and broad conversation to have and also different people have different concerns and different worries uh, but the one thing i can say universally across the board aside from skincare which is a value um is drink a lot of water drink 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 yeah. drink oh, water. Yeah. water 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 yeah. water water yeah that's absolutely true for sure well delia we're so thrilled for you to come by and tell us about the smurfy ever after project and Get on the get online with fresh farmhousefreshgoods.com and check it out. Yes, and you check will love it all out. And we also, in addition to the six limited edition um, products that are part of this collection, and they're great gifts. That one shows the um, the Smurf soda bath bath fizzer. That's a great gift. Yes. Um, but we also have um, some charitable merchandise too, in which all of the profits go towards um, our animal rescue project. So all sorts of great things. It's never too soon to start shopping for the holidays. This is a great gift for the person who has everything and wants a little nostalgic uh, flair. That's right. Well, that is great. And, and as always, Moms of the Moms Club, if you type in Moms Club at checkout on your online purchase at farmhousefreshgoods.com, you can get $10 off a $50 purchase. It doesn't apply to the Smurfs Ever After campaign because that's a special yeah. donation that they're making, but it applies to everything else. So definitely go online and check it out. And thanks again, Delia, so much. It's been so great to have you with us on the Moms Club. <laughs> So, Melissa, we have some other moms that want to ask you some questions, and they are our Zoomer moms. So let's welcome in our Zoomer moms. Welcome to the Moms Club. So, ladies, I'm just going to go around and have introduce you. You introduce yourself a little bit. Tell Melissa a little bit about yourself, and do you have a question for her? Laura, let me start with you. Welcome to the Moms Club. Goodness, I knew you were going to start with me. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, first off, my name's Laura. So for about three years, my my dad, which is like an interesting thing that I would like to bring up, put my hair in pigtails mm. and I had braids. And it was because of you, right? <laughs> and um, I've never really loved television, but that was like a moment with my dad that Aww. like he would do for me. And, and you know, I'm gonna tell you when I was nine and 10, I didn't really love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what was happening in my life because of you. And I actually, I, I think through this conversation and I've really been listening hard about like what you've done as a human. And it, it's really quite beautiful, but um, it's astounding to me because like you hurt you are who i would like to be 
Oh, oh my like gosh. Your dynamic, your, your voice, your point of view. And I think it's really cool. And at the same time, I'm really angry at you for three years. I had to wear pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> just can't you just tell her. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I swear. They made me wear them. <laughs> you know, right. Blame Lori Ingalls Wilder. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can't blame her. <laughs> Exactly. It, it's 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 Garth, uh, Garth, the, the guy who illustrated the Little House in the Prairie yeah, books. Yeah. He threw her with the pigtails. Yeah. Not my fault. That's hilarious. <laughs> she might not have liked him either, really, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> Lisa, it is Lisa's birthday, so happy birthday, happy Lisa. Happy birthday, Welcome Lisa. to the Moms Club, <laughs> and tell us a little bit about yourself, and do you have a question for Melissa? You're muted, sweetie. Yes, I had to unmute there myself. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. I am 60 today, so I grew up like your same era, all of the stuff that, you know, you were doing. And I just love Little House on the Prairie. In fact, I will say that re watching that show actually made me read the book. And I am Monica's sister. Monica's very, like, smart and booky, and I didn't like to read. So um, that's a big deal for me to want to read a book. So... You were inspiring kids, even though you were a kid yourself. I always wondered, now this is a dumb question, Monica's going to get on me, but um, I always thought that, what would it must be like to work with Nellie? Did you like her behind the scenes? Every time I saw Nellie, I'm like, that girl is too much. But was she really a nice person? What was Nellie really like as a friend? <laughs> She is still one of my closest friends today. Um, it's really interesting. Um, I've I've been in this business a really long time. I've started actually when I was two mm -hmm. um, and I've done a lot of different things. And as a, a young ingenue and an adult, I had a lot of um, leading men on screen. And I find that um, as, as kind of challenging as the love relationship can be to play, the opposite can be really, really hard when you're like in the case of me and Alison Arngram, mm -hmm. when we were doing our scenes together, we really had to trust each other because we were beating the crap out of each other <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and you have to really trust each other that you're not going to hurt each other. Um, and so we became pretty fast friends right away. And we had slumber parties at each other's houses. We Aww. went to each other's birthday. We took oh. trips together. Um, I like to sleep over at her house more because she had more freedom. Her family had less rules. Like she could actually go walk to the store to buy candy and stuff. And I wasn't allowed to go anywhere and eat sugar. So at Allison, no. oh. <laughs> I had all the fun. Um, and oh, I, well, now that's shocking. I would have never expected Nellie to be anyone you would want to be. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear. She's great and she's funny. And I'll tell you, one time we were walking down the street and a woman saw us together and she jumped in between us and put me behind her and I swagged her finger and I was stay away from her. I was so little, I, I didn't know how to say it, but all I wanted to say was, you know, it's not real, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Jennifer. Well, I'm going to really check out your your um, app. I think it seems perfect for for my wheelhouse now. So thanks yeah. for starting it up. <laughs> yeah, well, enjoy. Yeah, thank Je you, Jennifer. Welcome to the Moms Club. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and do you have a question for Melissa? Uh, Melissa, hi, Jennifer. So uh, good to hear about all the things you're doing now. I mean, I was I've always known about you know your incredible early career. It's so fun to see what you're doing with your. Mm -hmm. I don't know what act you call this point, like the 12th act or something. <laughs> but um, I, I really, I love, so I'm from upstate New York. And when you start talking about moving to upstate New York, I literally got chills because it's such an incredible part of this country. And it's just lovely. If you haven't been, you need to go. Um, so I would love to know how you find your products. Cause you know, you say everything has mm. a story and I do feel like upstate New York specifically has a lot of people, artisans, and there's, like the farm to table has been there forever. That's just like how they live. So um, I just, how do you find your products? That's for a really good modern question. Fare? We find them a bunch of different ways. Um, it, it, it's things that my partner and I love and we find companies that, you know, we, we sort of put together templates of the things that we like and we found companies that made things that were similar or that could make things for us that we love. Um, and that's really how it started. But then also there were, there are a few companies that we work with um, Bright Endeavors being one that comes to mind. And um, 
Oh, gosh, there's another pottery company. The Bright Endeavors, their mission is um, they bring in single mothers who don't have a career and don't have degrees, and Uh they train them in not only how to put, not, not only how to make and distribute the candles, but how to go through the entire business model. And they give them a six week, basically a business course where they learn packaging, they learn uh inventory they learn how to actually make the candles how the manufacturing of things goes how the shipping goes and all of that so that they come out with some knowledge of 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 um something that could potentially be a career for them which i love and then there's another company we work with and i'm so sorry my 59 year old brain is just like (laughs) uh, i cannot remember the name of it and i'm gonna kick myself for this but their mission statement is they are a, a resource for um, women who are uh, sober coming out of uh, situations where they've been addicted to drugs and alcohol and are getting their lives back on track. And they teach them how to make these uh, these pottery items and the money goes mm-hmm. back into uh, helping them, whether they're in a shelter or out on their own, get back on their feet after or if they're in sober living to get back on their feet after having a certain amount of sobriety under their belt. So I think that's really important too. And then the rest is just, you know, it's things we love, things that we would have in our house. And it sort of started with the butter crock. Um, <laughs> the butter crock is a thing that a lot of people don't know about, but a lot, many people do. It's a very old fashioned way of storing butter. It's just a, some people call it a butter bell. Ours is a butter crock. It's just an upside down ceramic piece that you put your butter in and you put it in upside down and put a little water in the container that it sits in and it keeps butter soft and spreadable. It's from the bygone days. And it's so evocative to me of like the little house experience. And that sort of was the centerpiece for everything we did was our butter crock. Oh gosh. That is amazing. I love all these stories because, you know, it's really, again, it feels like a lot of what you do is women helping women, which, you know, is, you know, pretty much our mission, uh, you know, with inside the mom's club, because, you know, we're all doing this for the, you know, we only get one chance to be, yeah. you know, at every stage with our kids and with our husband, you know, in our lives. And it's so fun that you've shared all of your ideas. And um, I love that you're like a crafty person now. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, love- me neither. <laughs> <laughs> you're inspiring. I can't wait to start like using the app and uh, learning how to make mozzarella. That's right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. The mozzarella lesson is up there. And we also just we have some new items, too, that um, we have this wonderful woman who is a company called Julia's Brodery, and she's done some exclusive uh, embroidery designs for us that comes in a whole kit with the thread and the needle and the instructions. They're oh these beautiful little things that. So if you want to start crafting, that's a really good place to start. Oh, that sounds cool. like there's hope for that's me. Cool. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to try that. I think I'm going to, I'm going to okay. try that. Oh, okay. I'm going to bring, it, bring it on the show. Yeah. I've, I've pledged to even try to learn to dance, which is a whole other thing. Um, oh. ha- ah. <laughs> Are you a good dancer? Are you? I no. was on that dancing show. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. True. Yeah. 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 I, I can, do you remember know, that. There's nothing she can't do. I'm I know. Like, like really? Yeah. Uh, um, Helen, welcome to the Moms Club. Do you have a question for Melissa? Oh my gosh, Melissa, I don't even know where to begin. I will be 58 next month. And so I basically grew up watching you. And one of the things I'd like to thank you for is having a show that I was able to watch with my dad, who is no longer with us, my grandmother. We, I mean, I just have so many memories of watching, you know, and now of course you can see, I can see you on TV every day. And about three or four years ago, maybe five years ago, my 12 year old, now 12 year old daughter and I um, watched the entire series together. Nice. And it was amazing to be able to have conversations with her about things, alcoholism, racism, Mm. um, dementia. Um, She was able to understand that my aunt who had Alzheimer's was going through something that was similar on the show and able to talk about it in a way that she wouldn't have been able to. So I have to thank you for all of that first and then let you know that I saw the episode yesterday when you pushed Nellie down the hill after she (laughs) pretended that she broke her leg um, because she when she took off on your horse, Bunny. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just incredible that that was on yesterday. And then here I am actually talking to you live today. So um, (laughs) I, I don't even know where to begin. But um, I would, I, 
I'm going through a midlife reassessment myself mm -hmm. and trying to figure out what my next act is. And but what I wanted to ask you about is with everything that you went through from a you know actor from two years old until today, how did you it seemingly because I actually have followed you. I follow I've already followed you on Instagram and I've already, you know, checked out your modern prairie website and look forward to to getting on the app. But how was it how were you able to not go through so many of the things that we have seen so many young actors go through. I mean, I, I, I you don't have to, t you know, I'm sure you had your own traumatic experiences, but it seems like you were able to stay steady and focused and just continue to be the amazing person. We, you have always seemed to me as a, as a, you know, person who's watched you my entire life, basically. And it's just such a thrill to to see the person you've become and, you know, my future farm mentor now because that's my <laughs> dream, to have chickens and I have my own garden. I do garden. I love to cook. Need to learn how to knit. But um, it's just, <laughs> yeah. So I'm babbling on. Thank you. No, no, no. It's totally fine. And I, all I can get, like, the only word that keeps going through my head is therapy. Therapy. <laughs> I can hear my therapist <laughs> saying, that's me. I did that. <laughs> I think it's because of, it's actually because of, of um, I had a therapist for many, many years named Marta, who we call Smarta, who mm. really helped me to, I mean, I did have a lot of trauma, just like everybody does in, in many different ways of my own growing up. And none of it was ever work related. Mine was all personal. I lost my father when I was 11. Mm -hmm. um, there was there was a lot, you know, my parents divorced when I was six. My father died when I was 11 um, and on and on and on. And so um, uh, I just always made a conscious decision to to do my best to work through those things and not take them out on anybody else. It's really like the best that I can do. Um, I, I owe Smarta a lot. She helped me through a lot of really difficult times. And um, and she's there when I need her, which is very rare now, because now I'm just kind of a very contented, quiet, peaceful old lady who yeah. sometimes gets riled up about something, but not enough to wreak havoc. So Smarta did her job. I need a Smarta. Everyone, because you're a very that. inspiring woman, and I don't. I'm, I'm I almost mean, speechless, which is rare. I have a silly question that. for you, Melissa. Sure. You know, we're close to closing, but you know, my cousin talks about owning chickens all the time, and she's got a favorite name. And I need, I just need to know on your farm, like, what is your favorite chicken name? Have you or any favorite name for your animals that? you have out there my favorite chicken yeah <laughs> Yo, don't you have chickens and they all have names or they all have names i only have three hens left now because we've had we had a real problem with foxes and somebody got sick and yeah mm. so um right now we have um one andrew sister where we had three so i don't know which one it is so she's just andrews oh. and, um, and then her little brown sister is peep so I have okay. Andrew's Pete and the one chicken that I'm madly in love with, Coco. Oh, oh Coco so is um, she's a black French Moran and she just has the she's I don't know. I didn't know chickens could have a personality. She oh, loves yeah. she loves to have blueberries at the end of the day. And if I don't give her the blueberries and she's out free ranging, she'll come and knock on the back door. Until See, I, I told you she's, yeah, she's got magic going on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Funny. funny funny lady and um she's the only one i have a new puppy too sundance who's here sleeping on the couch oh yeah and oh wow sundance is a herding kind of dog and so she likes to herd the chickens and coco is the only one who will just stand there and look at sundance like what are you mm -mm. crazy I'm yeah not have you lost your I'm mind yeah i don't yeah. run from you puppy it's not <laughs> wow. my dog well you le you're leading an amazing life. I have one quick final question. That is, when I signed up for your app, mm -hmm. it asks you where you were born. Interesting. What was the thinking behind that question? I can't answer that question for you. Oh, because okay. I, I was just curious. I thought, are they trying to get and us I all together, like all of us? Yeah, like for I was born at Baylor Hospital in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. So I must. So I was just curious. That that was just curious. Well, Melissa, this has been amazing, and I want to encourage every woman out yes. there to sign up. For Modern Prairie app, you're gonna love it and check it out, check out the website. Where exactly can we find all the information we need to sign up? Um, you can find it on the at the website at www.modernprairie.com. 
Uh, the app is available at the iTunes, at the um, App Store on the iPhone, and then also on the Android. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the Modern Prairie app. So that's it's a lot of fun. It. Great, it is fun. It's Everybody, very fun. Sign up today as you're listening to this. So Zoomer moms, I have a quick question. I want to go around and think of what's the one word that you, comes to your mind when you think of Melissa, Laura. Uh, childhood and father. Got yeah. it. Helen. Inspiration. Yeah. Lisa. A little jealous there. Got to be a child star and you did a great job. <laughs> That's not one. What's your one, one word? word. <laughs> one Mom, you word. You know, I can't go to. You've grown up with me. I'm hard on one word. That's awesome. true. We can. Awesome. Like awesome. it. That is a, one of my. Jennifer. Um, I always think the countryside. I think Lily House on the Prairie in the countryside, and I see her running through fields. Ah, the country. countryside. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, all Zoomer moms, and thank you again, Melissa. This has been amazing. We've enjoyed talking to you. And thank you to our sponsor again, Farmhouse Fresh, and be sure, moms, to put that Moms Club code when you check out to get $10 off yeah, a $50 I purchase. You're going to love it. You're going to be so happy. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to run home and slather myself okay. with uh, Moon Dip because it's it's an amazing product. And check us out on Instagram at Inside the Moms Club. Check out our website, InsideTheMomsClub.com. Mm -hmm. And we have an exciting thing that's happening. Moms Club is going on the road. We want to meet all you moms out there. Just like with Modern Prairie, this is a community. Moms supporting other moms, getting to know other moms. And it's just amazing. So we want you to join us out there. Well, we can't believe that we're already out of time. It always happens way too fast. But we'll be back next time yeah. with celebrities and extraordinary moms just like you. We know that your me time is precious and valuable. Thank you so much, moms, for spending it with us. And don't forget our motto. Mm -hmm. If you can't laugh sometimes, moms, you're, you're going to cry. So don't cry. Laugh, everybody, and enjoy life. And we'll see you next time on Inside the Moms Club. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank